Early morning sunlight streamed down onto the forest floor as Firepaw roamed in search of prey. Two moons had passed since he had begun his training. He felt at ease in this environment now. His senses had been woken and educated in the ways of the woods. Firepaw paused to sniff the earth and the cold blind things that moved within it. He caught the scent of a two-leg that had wandered the forest recently. Now that Greenleaf was fully here, leaves were thick on the branches and tiny creatures were busy beneath the carpet of leaf mold. Firepaw made a lean, strong shape as he moved silently through the trees, all his senses alert for the scent trail that would end in a swift kill. Today, he had been set his first solo task. He was determined to do well, even if his task was only to bring back fresh kill for the clan. He headed for the stream that he had crossed on that first trek through the ThunderClan hunting grounds. It gurgled and spattered as it ran downhill over the smooth, round pebbles. Firepaw paused briefly to lap at the cold, clear water, then lifted his head and tested the air again for any scent of prey. The stench of a fox lay heavy in the air here. The smell was stale, so the fox must have drunk here earlier in the day. Firepaw recognized the odor. He had smelled it on his first visit to the forest. Since then, Lionheart had taught him it was fox scent. But, apart from the glimpse of the fox's brush he had caught on that first outing, Firepaw has still never seen one properly. He struggled to screen out the fox stench and concentrate on prey scent. Suddenly, his whiskers prickled as he homed in on the warm blood beat of prey, a water vole busy about its nest. A moment later, he saw the vole. The fat, brown body was darting back and forth along the bank as it gathered grass stalks. Firepaw's mouth watered in anticipation. His last meal had been many hours ago, but he dared not hunt for himself until the clan had been fed. He remembered the words repeated by Lionheart and Tigerclaw time and time again. The clan must be fed first. Dropping into a crouch, Firepaw began to stalk the little creature. His orange belly fur brushed against the damp grass. He crept closer, his eyes never leaving his prey. Almost there. Another moment and he would be near enough to spring. Suddenly, there was a loud rustle in the ferns behind him. The water vole's ears twitched and it disappeared down a hole in the bank. Firepaw felt the hackles rising along his spine. Whatever had ruined his first good chance of catching prey would have to pay. He sniffed the air. He could tell it was a cat, but he realized with a jolt that he couldn't identify which clan it belonged to. The stale stench of fox still confused his smell sense. A growl rose in his throat as he began doubling back in a wide circle. He pricked up his ears and opened his eyes wide, seeking out any movement. He heard the undergrowth rustle again. It was louder now, off to one side. Firepaw edged closer. He could see the ferns moving, but the fronds still hid the enemy from view. A twig snapped with a sharp cracking noise. From the noise it's making, it must be big, Firepaw thought, preparing himself for a fierce battle. He leaped for the trunk of an ash and climbed swiftly and silently up to an overhanging branch. Below him, the invisible warrior came closer, and closer still. Firepaw held his breath, judging his moment as the ferns were pushed aside and a large grayish shape emerged. Rah! The battle cry rumbled in Firepaw's throat. Claws unsheathed, he launched himself at the enemy and landed squarely on a set of furry muscular shoulders. He dug in hard, gripping with thorn-sharp claws, ready to deal out a powerful warning bite. What was that? The body below him shot straight up in the air, carrying him with it. Ugh, Greypaw! Firepaw recognized the astonished voice and caught his friend's familiar scent, but he was too fired up to loosen his grip. Ambush! Roar! Spat Greypaw, not realizing that the cap gripping onto his back was Firepaw. He rolled over and over in an attempt to dislodge his attacker. <laughs> Firepaw rolled with him, squashed and flattened beneath the heavy body. It's me, Firepaw! He yowled as he struggled to pull full free his sheath his claws. Rolling away, he sprang to his feet and gave himself a shake, which rippled all the way along his body to the end of the tail. Greypaw, it's me! He repeated. I thought you were an enemy warrior! Greypaw rose to his feet. He winced and shook himself. It felt like it, he grumbled, twisting his head around to lick his sore shoulders. You've raked me to shreds! Sorry, Firepaw mumbled. But what was I supposed to think with you creeping up on me like that? Creeping up? Greypaw's eyes were round with indignation. That was my best stealth crouch. Stealth? You still stalk like a lopsided badger, Firepaw teased. He flattened his ears playfully. 
Grandpa gave a hiss of delight. I'll show you, lopsided. The two cats leaped at each other and began rolling over and over in a play fight. Grandpa swiped at Firepaw with a hefty paw, and the young apprentice's head buzzed with stars. <sighs> Firepaw shook his head to clear it and then launched a counterattack. He managed to get in a couple of paw strikes before Graypaw overpowered him and held him down. Firepaw let his body go limp. You give up too easily, mewed Graypaw, loosening his grip. As he did so, Firepaw sprang to his feet, firing Graypaw off his back and into the undergrowth. Firepaw leaped after him and pinned him to the ground. Surprise is the glorious greatest weapon, he crowed, quoting one of Lionheart's favorite phrases. He jumped nimbly off Graypaw and began to squirm around in the leaf litter, enjoying his easy victory and the warmth of the earth against his back. Graypaw seemed unbothered by his second defeat of the morning. It was too fine a day for a bad temper. So, how are you getting on with your task? he asked. Firepaw sat up. I was doing just fine till you came along. I was about to catch a vole when your noisy trampling frightened it off. Oh, sorry, mewed Graypaw. Firepaw looked at his crestfallen friend. That's okay, you didn't know, he purred. Anyway, he continued, shouldn't you be heading to meet with the patrol on the Wind Clan border? I thought you had to give him a message from Blue Star. Yeah, but there's plenty of time. I was going to do a little hunting first. I'm starving. Me too, but I've got to hunt for the clan before I can hunt for myself. I bet Dustpaw and Sampa used to swallow a shrew or two when they were on hunting duty snorted Graypaw. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, but this is my first solo assignment. And you want to do it right, I know, Graypaw sighed. What is the message from Blue Star anyway? Firepaw asked, changing the subject. She wants the patrol to wait at the Great Sycamore until she joins them at Sun High. Seems like some Shadow Clan cats have been prowling around. Blue Star wants to check things out. You'd best get going then, Firepaw reminded him. The Wind Clan hunting grounds aren't too far from here. There's plenty of time, answered Graypaw confidently. And I suppose I should help you out after losing you that vole. It doesn't matter, Firepaw mewed. I'll find another. It's such a warm day, there should be quite a few out and about. True, but you still have to catch them. Graypaw nibbled at a front claw, stripping away off a piece of the outer sheath thoughtfully. You know, that should take you until Pat way past sun high, maybe even till sunset. Firepaw nodded without enthusiasm as his belly gave a rumble. He would probably have to make three or four hunting trips before he had caught enough prey. Silverpelt would be in the sky before he got a chance to eat. Grippa stroked his whiskers. Come on, I'll help you get started. I owe that at least. We should be able to catch a couple of volts before I have to get going. Firepaw followed Grippa upstream, glad of the company and the help. The fox stench was still in the air, but it smelled suddenly stronger. Firepaw paused. Can you smell that? he asked. Graypaw stopped and sniffed the air too. Fox. Yeah, I smelled it earlier. Doesn't it smell fresher to you now though? Firepaw asked. Graypaw sniffed again, opening his mouth slightly. You're right, he murmured, lowering his voice. He swiveled his head to look across the stream at the bushes and the woods beyond. Look! Firepaw looked. He saw something red and thick-haired moving among the bushes. It stepped into a clearing into the undergrowth, and Firepaw saw a low body, glinting red in the dappled sunlight. Its tail was heavily furred and had a long, narrow snout. So that's a fox? Firepaw whispered. What an ugly muzzle! You could say that again, agreed Graypaw. I was following one of those when we first... met. More likely it was following you, you idiot, hissed Graypaw. Never trust a fox. Looks like a dog, behaves like a cat. We must warn the queens that one is straight into our territory. Fox are as bad as badgers when it comes to killing young kits. I'm just glad you didn't catch up with the one you saw last time. He'd have made mouse meat out of a tiny scrap like you. Firepaw looked a little put out, and Graypaw added. You'd stand a better chance these days, though. Anyway, Blue Star would probably send a warrior patrol to scare it off. Put the queen's minds at rest. The fox had not noticed them, so the two apprentices continued along the stream. So... What does a badger look like? Firepaw asked as they prowled along, sniffing to either side. Black and white, short legs, you know one when you meet one. They're bad-tempered, lumbering animals. They're less likely to raid the nursery than a fox, but they have a vicious bite. How do you think old Halftail earned his name? He hasn't been able to climb a tree since a badger bit his tail off. 
Why not? Scared of falling. A cat needs his tail if he wants to land on his feet. Helps him spin in midair. Firepaw nodded in understanding. As Firepaw had predicted, hunting was good that day. Before long, Graypaw had pounced on a small mouse and Firepaw had caught a thrush. He quickly took its life. No time to practice killing techniques today. There were too many hungry mouths waiting back at camp. Firepaw kicked earth over the prey so it would be safe from predators until he came back for it. Suddenly, a squirrel broke cover. Firepaw burst into action. After it, he called, pelting at full stretch over the springy woodland floor with Graypaw at his heels. They slid to a halt as the squirrel scampered upward into a birch. Lost it, Graypaw growled in disappointment. Panting, the two cats stopped to catch their breath. The acrid stench that hit their mouths and noses surprised them. The Thunderpath, Firepaw mewed. I didn't realize we'd come so far. The two cats edged forward to peer out of the forest at the great, dark path. It was the first time they had been here alone. A trail of noisy creatures growled along the hard surface, their dead eyes staring straight ahead. Yuck! Graypaw snorted. Those monsters really stink! Firepaw twitched his ears in agreement. The choking smells made his throat sting. Have you ever been across the Thunder Path? He mewed. Graypaw shook his head. Firepaw took a step out of the cover of the forest. A border of oily grass lay between the trees and the thunder path. He crept slowly out onto it and then shrank back as the stinking monster hurtled past. Hey, where are you going? Graypaw mewed. Firepaw didn't answer. He waited until there were no monsters in sight. Then he edged forward again, across the grass, right to the edge of the path. Cautiously, he reached out a paw to touch it. It felt warm, almost sticky, heated by the sun. He looked up, staring across the thunder path. Was that a pair of eyes glinting out of the forest on the other side? He sniffed the air, but smelled nothing except the stench of the great gray path. The eyes on the other side were still shining in the shadows. Then they blinked, slowly. Firepaw was sure now. It was a Shadow Clan warrior, and it was staring straight at him. Firepaw! Graypaw's voice made Firepaw jump, just as a huge monster, taller than a tree, roared past his nose. The wind from it almost toppled him over. Firepaw turned and ran as fast as he could back into the safety of the forest. You mouse brain fool! spat Graypaw. His whiskers trembled with fear and anger. What were you doing? I just wondered what the Thunderpath felt like, Firepaw muttered. His whiskers were trembling too. Come on! hissed Graypaw edgily. Let's get out of here! Firepaw followed Graypaw as he leapt away back into the forest. Once they were a safe distance from the Thunderpath, Graypaw stopped to catch his breath. Firepaw sat down and began to lick his ruffled fur. I think I saw a Shadow Clan warrior, he mewed between licks. In the forest on the other side of the Thunderpath. A Shadow Clan warrior? echoed Graypaw, his eyes wide. Really? I'm pretty sure. Well, it's a good thing that monster came past when it did, retorted Graypaw. Where there's one Shadow Clan warrior, there's more, and we're no match for them yet. We better get out of here. He looked up at the sun, which was almost directly overhead. I better get a move on if I want to meet that patrol on time, he mewed. See you later. He sprung away onto the undergrowth, calling as he went. You never know, Lionheart might let me come and help you with the hunting once I've delivered this message. Firepaw watched him go. He envied Graypaw, wishing he were off to join a warrior patrol. But at least he'd have something to tell Dustpaw and Sandpaw when he returned to camp. Today, he had seen his first Shadow Clan warrior.